Hey, this is DJ Jazzy Jeff, and you are checking out Crate Diggers. I think my collection started with my older brother. So I had a brother that played the bass for the Intruders. You know, we had soul bands rehearsing in the basement growing up. We had 78s around the house. So it, there was all kinds of vinyl when I was three, four years old. And when I got about six, seven, my older brother gave me the ability when he went to work to mess around with his stereo. So I would make my own tapes. Um, but of course, this was very much pre-hip-hop. Um, so I was making tapes of George Duke and Mahavishnu Orchestra and Chick Corea and just things that he was into because I wasn't old enough to have my own music. My music was his music. The funny thing is I didn't tell my mom this until I got married, was that my entire time in high school, I never had lunch. My, and my mother gave me money every day for lunch and I never ate lunch, I would take that money every day and store it for records. And after school, I would just hop on the subway and go downtown and, you know, three records for 99 cents, and I just had a stack of 45s. Back then, Philly had, every street had a DJ or a rapper on it. But it was, Philly was very much about the DJ and not really about the MC. Um, and you knew of everybody, you know, because you would do these parties and you see the names on the flyers. Um, so I was very familiar with Will and the, and the crew that he was with. And, you know, and I had an MC and Will had another DJ. Um, ironically, someone asked me to do a house party on his block. And I couldn't, and it was last minute, I couldn't find the MC that I had, you know, because this was pre-cell phone and pre-pages. So if he didn't answer the house phone, I wasn't going to get him. So I just went without an MC. So it was all these times of me seeing Will at the party and just, yo, what's up? This was the first time that we kind of got in a room together. And, you know, I was in the party and he was just like, hey, you know, you know, where's Ice, who was my MC? And I was like, you know, he didn't come. He was like, you mind if I get on the mic and rock? And it was a natural chemistry that I could tell that Will understood bar structure you know, he understood, you know, and the same thing with me, that you kind of know if an MC is rhyming, that on the fourth bar is where he hits his punchline. So for me to get to that fourth bar and drop the music out so he can deliver the punchline and then scratch back in at the top of the bar made him feel good. Like, it was kind of like, wow, that was natural. How'd you know I was going to do that? But it was the same thing that you know, the way he would intro scratches, it wasn't over top of each other. He would kind of wait for me to get something set up and he would be like, Jeff, you know, check out Jeff on it. And I'm like, wow, you know, how did he figure that out? You know, and the night just went, you know, it was so much chemistry that night and we laughed and joked and, you know, he was just really silly and I was really silly. We just had a good time. Um, and I remember leaving like, wow, that, you know, I really don't want to go back to this other guy again. First of all, I never really classified myself as a collector. Um, I'm more of a lover of, you know, records and vinyl. Um, and I never counted. You know, I never was one of the guys that's like, you know, I have this many records or, or this many. Um, and I have maybe 10,000 records at my mom's house that I just won't let her get rid of. You know, I have a bunch of records here. I have a humongous amount of records, you know, in storage. And I kind of look at them almost now as my personal record store. That whenever I want a different vibe, whenever I'm, you know, want to look for something new, give me a breath of fresh air, you know, I can go in the back and climb over these boxes and open up something and see, th and you're always finding something. It's, you're always, oh, wow, wow, I have this, let me pull this out. Well, you know, I had so many records at my mom's house that there was a point in time that I wanted to get rid of some of my records, you know, and I just took a whole bunch of records and I put them out in front on trash day, you know, and it's funny because you can put records out if I put records out, especially at my mom's house in West Philly, if I put them out at 12 o'clock at night for trash and the trash man came at 8 o'clock in the morning, by 7 o'clock all of those records are gone, you know, and somebody had them, you know, and 
as I got a little bit older and understood the value of the collection and just what the, it really meant, I vowed that I will never throw away a record, you know, again. You know, whether I like it, you know, whether it's scratched, you know, it's just it's just something about that that I, you know, it almost upset my stomach to realize that I did that one day. That I almost don't tell people that story. I'm one of those people that I've heard records that I wanted, that I hunted for and bought and three months later dug in another pile and realized that I owned it for 10 years. You know, I've been blessed to go on beat digging trips with Kenny Dope on one side and Jay Dilla on the other side. And, you know, I especially remember going to Pittsburgh with Kenny and Dilla. We left about one o'clock, end up getting to Pittsburgh about six in the morning and checked into a motel until the store opened. It was literally a million records in the store that when we walked into this place, we stood there for 10 minutes and everybody just looked around before anyone touched anything because I don't think any of us has, has ever seen that many records. The bad thing about it was I, none, of the records were, none of the records were more than $4. And we, you go to the cash register at 745 with a stack of records like this, and I'm sitting there like this, and the guy looks at the records and says, give me $150. And I'm like, if I have knew you were gonna do that, I'd have bought more. You know, we bought so many records that when they closed the store, we were sitting on a sidewalk. If, if we'd have put all of the records in the truck, we wouldn't have been able to fit. We drove six hours and had to pull over every hour just to stretch because we were uncomfortable, but there was no way that we were gonna ship these records. There was no way that we weren't gonna bring these records back from Pittsburgh. There's no real method to it. It's almost like I've always kept my records that I knew where they were. That, you know, someone says, you know, I'm looking for this Gangstar record, and it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, I think my Gangstar record, if I go right down here, I remember that my full clip with the beat up cover is right here. Like, but only I know that it's there. You know, I've never tried, I've tried a couple of times to put them in BPM order and genre order, and it's just like, it doesn't work. You know, all the way down to Bill Cosby, Why Is There Air? You know, it's just one of the original comedy albums. And looking, you know, I remember when everyone had these raw break records, that these were like the first, one of the first records that they would have that would just have a beat to go all the way through. So I'm really glad that I kind of pulled this out because I don't have this converted, that I think I need to do that. Wow. This is a DJ Cool record that he put out an independent single called The Music Ain't Loud Enough. This was 1988. This was when Cool was doing a lot of the go-go stuff. And I'm pretty sure that he would be really shocked that I have two pretty clean copies of his record. Wow. I am a humongous Brazilian fan. I love Brazilian music. You know, I love Sergio Mendez. Um, and this is probably when I went on a hunt. I know there's some people that you would just buy if you thought the cover was hot. And this was, you know, one of those records that it was just kind of like, you know what? It's a jazz samba record. I love Brazilian samba music. This is Stan Getz, you know. Stan Getz made some of the greatest samples, so let me just grab this and see what I can find. You know, sometimes you spend $35, $40 for a record that you're kind of like, ah, oh, I didn't really have anything on it. And sometimes you spend a dollar for the best record you've ever had in your life, so. I think all DJs, you know, I don't think you'll bump into a DJ who, if they collect records, I guarantee they have sneakers. You know, and I'm pretty sure they have dials and gadgets and just little stuff like that. It's, it's, it's the makeup of a, a, a crate digger, a DJ, you know, a record collector is just, is what we do. And don't fight it. I fought it for a long time. Doing it this long, saying you're obsessed with it, is you coming to grips with it. You've always been obsessed with it. You just said you weren't. You know, it's almost like, how you doing? You know, I, my name is Jeffrey Towns and I'm a crate digger. You know, it, it's just accepting who you are and this is what you do. Me collecting all these records and all the rest of this stuff is the reason why I'm here right now. So, you know, I don't think I would change anything.